So in the first part about REST template builder, we have seen basics about REST template builder, how we can use that to get the REST template instance with default configurations that Spring Boot is providing. In this video, we are going to look into how we can set the base URL that it has, right? So that we can directly hit the endpoint that it has. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is the REST template builder demo that we have. Right. So I was explaining about this, how we can exclude this from here and directly sit, say, uh, directly say the endpoint. So all that depends on this, uh, what rest template instance that we are creating. Right. So this is the config part. So while creating this builder, I can set the root URL, base URL here only. And then subsequently I can call this directly this endpoint right so let's see how we can do that so stop the server and let's do that so in config part so there is one class uri template handler okay so i can get the instance of uri template handler this this is the interface uri template handler is the interface and it has one class which is implementing this URI template handler as root URI template handler. If I go to here, so it has different constructors. So if I see this is taking the root URL, right? So the, what it is saying root template handler instance, the root URI to be used to prefix relative URLs. This is the same thing that I was explaining you, right? So if I go here, so it is implementing the URI template handler, right? So it is implementing all the meta methods of this class. So let's go ahead and set the root URL here. So what is the root URL? If I go to main controller and I'm going to take this control X and cut it and paste it. So this is becoming the root URL that is base URL for us. Okay. And I can set this here builder dot it has one method uri template handler that is taking the uri template handler and subsequently it is calling the build so build will be called but after setting this uri template handler so what instance it is returning now what instance of rest template we are getting from here it will have this base url set into this right so in main while calling the endpoints of this base url i can directly hit that endpoint so i'm going to hit the user's endpoint that we were hitting earlier so there should not be any difference in the output that we were getting right so let's go ahead and restart the application again and see Okay, so this application is started. Default port is 8080. Okay, so endpoint will be this user list. So our URL will become something like this user list, right? So let me close this and hit it again. I got the same response, right? But this time directly hitting the endpoint that we were earlier hitting with the complete URL here. So we have set the base URL using REST template builder here in while creating the instance of this REST template itself, right? So we are not going to do repeated, repetitively this instance, right? So we can directly hit the endpoint here. So you go ahead and call other endpoints that it has for getting, for adding users, for updating and deleting users. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to set the timeout as i was explaining in the first video there may be some situation where your third party service is taking more than usual time and you do not want to wait till that time right so you can get that ex exception out from there so because you have not configured the timeout it is going to wait uh, for that response infinitely infinitely right that is not the that should not be the case in actual scenario in production case right you should have configured some timeout there so in the next video i am going to show you how in this builder i can set the timeout part right so i'll see you in the next video till then you play around this that i just explained you and if you have any issue you just put that in comment section i'll be happy to help you out so you so see you in the next video take care bye bye